Yeah, but the, what makes him like really good is like you have to, you have to like get on his wavelength. I watched the trailer, and it's like they did the same thing with the, like the the un- unbearable weight of being talent or whatever the fuck that other one was where he plays himself. Well, his performance in that, and then it seems like this one is pretty straightforward. I mean, he's he's it's like he's not being crazy adaptation is also like kind of a straightforward performance no it's straight yeah but it's a straightforward comedic performance if you want to see if you want to see nicholas cage's talent watch dying of the light that's that he plays a cia agent who's aging and finds out he has alzheimer's and he's trying to like fucking solve one last thing about like this terrorist or whatever uh-huh. And it's the movie's all over the place politically, and the script's atrocious, and it's just, <laughs> just bad. But Nicolas Cage never phones it in ever, ever. Uh, that, that's and, kind of and like that's where you really get to see his ability that sets him apart. Uh, Anyways, I watched the trailer for this one. Yeah. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's probably good. But it's, it's really funny. But it, that's not what the that's not. It's just I don't like because you, you, they did again. They did it with the other the, the last Nicolas Cage movie. Is you see people responding to it as if it's like he's they always almost and nobody's saying explicitly. It's just the tonality of the criticism is that he somehow redeemed himself. And it's like no, you're a fraud. You don't appreciate well, how good this guy was the whole time. Exactly. Well, it's like imagine like a cooking show. Right? Yeah, yeah. And you had a good chef on there, and because like cook people like. Uh, cooking is like the you see the process like okay chef here, here's your competition and today you only get three ingredients uh like uh 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 like a heirloom tomato fucking f- flour and i don't know whatever you know they give them a couple of ingredients and the skill of the act or the chef is the ability to make something good with just these limited amount of ingredients that's a recurring theme on the cooking shows yeah so like people can assess like oh this guy must be a good chef because they can do stuff with like a limited the amount of resources. Re- yeah. Constraints. And then with like Nicolas Cage performances, it's like you wait until they've given him the ingredients for like birthday cake. Uh-huh. And they're like, wow, this is really good. He can make a good cake. Whereas 90% of the time, they're like, okay, Nicolas Cage, here's your ingredients a pile of dog shit, a clown horn, and some hot glue. Uh-huh. <laughs> and then he's like, still making something that's like, <laughs> Kind of edible. Yeah, it's yeah. like a thought process behind it. He's like, well, on my eighth birthday, my, my dad uh, actually burned himself with a hot glue gun. So <laughs> I want to do something kind of reminiscent about, you know, a day in my life that was supposed to be happy. But it's like, and he's like, that's what's going on in his head when he's playing like, a, you know, like a plumber whose daughter yeah. gets sucked down the toilet and right. so he has to get revenge on bathrooms or whatever, like whatever the most. Uh, let me say this. The best the best Nicolas Cage movie that's also like a functional movie that's like it highlights his uh, color from outer space. What is that? It's a Richard Stanley movie. It's like based on... Uh, the some, horror guy? Or the, yeah. Yeah, it's based on some like Lovecraft, either book or short it's story. It's good? There's a color. There's an alien that's just a color. <laughs> but yeah, like Nicolas Cage just... He goes crazy halfway through. He goes the, full cage. Yeah, halfway through the movie because he's like sort of being possessed by the alien. Yeah. And halfway through the movie, he just starts doing like a Donald Trump impression. <laughs> I mean, it's it's amazing. When's it from? Like the nineties? No, it's from like twenty eighteen. The premise of Con Air is that he's like he's an army ranger and somebody tries to like fuck his wife or whatever. They harass his wife and so he spin kicks the guy's head off and they <laughs> put him in prison for murder. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like, you are training. Make you have you, because you're a weapon, right? 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 You right, have right. to show even more restraint. We don't believe this veteran uh, uh, was acting in self defense. <laughs> right? Right? right. He's a career criminal. <laughs> <laughs> he must certainly have a record of some kind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's who goes to jail. What a star-studded cast. Nick Cage, the good guy in in that movie, is a yeah. good guy. Yeah. But he's, got, the 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 mul- he's got a mullet and shit. Yeah, he has a big long hair. Oh. I love is there's two geniuses in the movie. There's two <laughs> yeah. genius characters who are too smart. It's the genius criminals. The yeah, ending of, in Archie, of Gone in 60 Seconds is so funny. Do you remember the plot well, of the was movie? It, was he, I think they use a crane or something, or is so, that earlier in the yeah, movie? Yeah, so the, so the plot of the movie is that Memphis Reigns, Nicolas Cage, is like, he's getting out of prison. He's no longer stealing cars. He's trying, trying to go straight. I'm trying to go straight. And Giovanni. Trying to get home get my daughter. Yeah, still Giovanni Rabisi. <laughs> trying to get my daughter. Giovanni Ribisi is his younger brother, and Giovanni Ribisi gets in trouble with like mm. some kind of like French criminal or something. Mm. And the guy, um, you know, he's either going to kill Giovanni Ribisi, uh, but he knows that Memphis Reigns is his brother, and Memphis Reigns is the best car thief. So right. he's like, 
here's 60 cars that you have to steal by midnight in three days, you know, and, like, deliver them all to the port or I'll kill your brother. And so, like, Nicolas Cage agrees to it. But Delroy Lindo plays the detective. It's like, I got my eye on you, Reigns. Mm-hmm. I'm going to, and you mess up in any way, I'm going to bust your ass down. Right. You know, or whatever. So, uh, Nicolas Cage has to just, like, steal all these cars. So he assembles his team, and they steal them all in, like, one night, and he gets them to, like, the criminal, they gets them, like, right at the, like, the deadline. But there's still the guy, like, double-crosses him, of and course. they end up in some fight. At the same time, Delroy Lindo's pursuing Nicolas Cage. Mm. He ends up in this, like, factory where this, like, final fight is going down, and the bad guy eventually, like, lines up with Delroy Lindo, and the bad guy, like, has Delroy Lindo where he's about to kill him. And so Nicolas Cage, like, shoves the bad guy off like a, uh, like a railing or something and kill, like, murders him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Delroy Lindo's like, don't worry about it. I'll clean all this up. <laughs> he's like, I, I, I was going to get just, you for Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, I'm right. let you off for oh, capital yeah, murder. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The, I got your back, Rain. <laughs> Yo, it's so bad. I can't wait. It's really bad. And they put on Lowrider. And Nicolas Cage is like, not yet. <laughs> and he just gets to like the bu- 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 and he's like okay let's roll <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand it's not just yeah. the president's man it's all of them I watched the, the way- first half of uh, Leaving Las Vegas last night yeah it's a good movie I loved it it was one yeah. of my favorite movies when I was a teenager yeah yeah. Why, because you were a drunk? <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> I used to love watching it because if you watch Leaving Las Vegas drunk, you think it's a movie about the world's most charming The man. coolest guy? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I am back, and I am ready to sign the check, baby. <laughs> I haven't seen it. I'm going to add it to my list of movies to oh, see. Oh, yeah. Leaving it's a Las great Vegas movie. Is, yeah. yeah, it's a fucking amazing movie. Maybe Nick Cage is best. What's great is it was. it's based on a novel by this guy, John O'Brien. Mm-hmm. John O'Brien was just some, like, I guess, screenwriter in, in Hollywood. But never really, I don't know, I think he had much success. He wrote an episode of Rugrats. Nice. Was, that's the extent of his career. But uh, he wrote that book, Leaving Las Vegas, and then they optioned it and made, they were making it into a movie. And, like, two weeks after they optioned it, he killed himself. What? Yeah. But the movie's about, uh, it's like a guy, it's like a screenwriter in Los Angeles. The movie starts off and he's already just like a complete fucking like drunk. And yeah. He's like, you know, ruining business relationships and he's getting fired. And so he decides that he's going to just burn all of his shit and take the rest of his money and go out to Las Vegas and drink himself to death in a hotel. That's over, fun. Like, the course of a month. And then That's he gets a good out. Way to go. Yeah, he gets out to, to Vegas and then, uh, um, yeah, just starts uh, hooking Elizabeth up. Elizabeth Shue? Yeah, he starts dating Elizabeth Shue, who's a prostitute. Nice. Who uh, then became an actress? <laughs> uh, Nick, uh, oh, Nick, come on, uh, same uh, thing. Dude. We all know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Chill out, man. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> Shut up. Okay. 